The motorsports world is where legends are made, the unthinkable happens, and barriers are broken. One man harnesses the power of an industry every week. This is the General Tire Down and Dirty Show, powered by Polaris Razor, with Jim Beaver. Welcome to another edition of the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. And uh, yes, we are still here, Crank, and we are still uh, knocking out some epic A-plus motorsports radio. And uh, yeah, it is definitely a weird mood with the industry for the world in general. Uh, but uh, like I promised you guys, we're going to try and continue on and uh, keep it innovative here with everything going on in the world around us. Uh, we're going to you know, try and dwell on some fun stuff in the world of motorsports racing. Obviously, we're going to talk a ton about sim racing, uh, some of the creative content that's coming out, maybe a little, uh, a little uh, Netflix because everybody's sitting around. But uh, uh, we're definitely going to uh, try and avoid the coronavirus talk for the next couple of hours here. So uh, thank you guys for joining uh, joining the show. Those of you tuning in on Sirius XM Channel 211, Dan Patrick Radio, much appreciated. Those of you tuning in on Sports Byline USA or the American Forces Network, welcome, welcome. And uh, those of you on Apple Podcasts or on my website, downanddirtyshow.com, much appreciated. Same to those of you tuning in on Podcast One. Man, we are all over the place, and i got to tell you, we are going to be all over the place today on this show. we got a couple of fun guests. I know uh, I've kind of switched things up. We're kind of doing one blockbuster guest every week, and we're doing one kind of uh, greatest hits from the past year or two, uh, kind of re-airing that as well. So this week, lining up, we have uh, in this first hour, we've got Kelly Earnhardt. Yes, you know her of Junior Motorsports. Um, you know, one of the most powerful women in NASCAR. Amazing interview. I was able to catch up with her earlier this week. We're going to air that in the show. She's got a book coming out uh, this week um, that uh, I think you de- definitely going to want to grab as well. So we'll get into all of that here in hour number one with Kelly Earnhardt on the show. Then looking at hour number two, we've got an interview I did last fall with a man, the myth, the legend, Travis Pastrana. So, yes, we will have an amazing interview with Travis Pastrana. We're going to be airing this week as well. I'm going to talk about some sim racing. I've got a major event coming up that you're going to want to tune into. You want to keep it locked and loaded. I've also got a bunch of motorsports news happening from around the globe. We are going to dive into that and a whole lot more. And if you got any fan questions, please hit me up at JimBeaver15 on social media. Love hearing from you fans. And, uh, you know, give me some ideas for the show, man. We are all ears. So we're going to take a short commercial break, and we'll be back with more here on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Whether you're looking for a tire that balances high-performance responsiveness and traction in wet and light snow conditions, excellent handling and traction in wet and dry conditions, or a summer performance tire designed with a driving enthusiast in mind, General Tire has you covered. From the all-new G-Max RS to the Grabber ATX, no matter what you drive, General Tire will get you where you're going. Learn more at GeneralTire.com. General Tire, cruising with the Down and Dirty Radio Show since 2012. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Conditions off the pavement are always changing, so why settle for a light bar that just turns on and off? The Rigid Adapt is a revolutionary new light bar that will automatically select from eight beam patterns that range from a widespread 90-degree flood to a 15-degree spot based on your vehicle's speed. Try that with your knockoff light bar. A dash-mounted controller allows the user to toggle between adaptive mode, beam patterns, and RGBW accent lighting. 
With Adapt, it's easier than ever to own the night. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount discount. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast, and be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Welcome back to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, where we're just getting things at cranking. Uh, yeah, thanks to everybody tuning in, regardless of whether you're at Sirius XM, Sports Byline, American Forces Network, Podcast One, Apple Podcasts, or Down and Dirty Radio Show. Appreciate uh, all of you as well as our, all of our local affiliates around the country. But, uh, you know, it's uh, this is going to be a fun show. Kelly Earnhardt, this is one of those bucket list type interviews. I get to have her on the show here in about uh, 15 minutes. You definitely want to hang tight for that because uh, this is one of those that uh, I wanted to do for a long time. She's on that list of guests. Uh, Dale Jr. would be another one that, uh, you, you know, you as a radio host, we, we have these bucket lists. She's on there. Dale Jr.'s on there. Um, Jimmy Johnson's another one that's on there. Lewis Hamilton, uh, definitely on my list. Uh, you know, so I've, I've got this bucket list list of interviews. Uh, I would say Mario Andretti, probably another one as well. But, uh, you know, I've got this bucket list, and it's like today we're checking one off the list, which is always, always fun. But, uh, you know, that being said, you know, obviously the motorsports world, I think uh, part of the reason why we've had these amazing guests, like we had Alexander Rossi last week and had him for darn near an hour on the show. Uh, director's Cut of That dropped on Podcast One over there, Project Action, by the way. You should check that out. But, uh, um, it's because everybody's sitting at home, right? One, sim racing has exploded. I, I've been very fortunate that uh, I have uh, a big esports program, so uh, we've kind of started relying on, on that quite a bit. Um, but, uh, you, know, you know, having a podcast and a media company definitely helps in times like this because you can still help share the narrative and create content, which is what we've been doing. But along those lines, I am pretty, pretty stoked to announce I am putting on an event April 11th. Mark your calendar, 3 o'clock Pacific time. My social media channels, YouTube, Twitch, uh, especially Facebook, uh, we are going to be broadcasting the very first ever Jim Beaver Esports E-Short Course World Cup, and it will be presented by General Tire. Um, but it is, uh, it is going to be a blockbuster event. If you are a fan of off-road, if you're a, fran- a fan of uh, action sport or action motorsports, if you're just looking for something rad to watch for two hours, tune in. Basically, what we're doing is we're taking some of the best drivers in the world. We're going to have the best sim racers in the world in regards to short course. We're going to have some of the best off-road drivers in the world. And then we're going to have some wild card entries that are just some of the baddest dudes to ever steer a race car anywhere in the world. So look at this entry list. We've got Travis Pastrana coming in. We've got Alexander Rossi coming in. We've got Connor Daly coming in. We've got Ron Caps coming in. We got Greg Biffle coming in. We got Gravedigger driver Tyler Meninga coming in. Uh, I mean, you, you want to look at Tanner Faust. How can I leave Tanner Faust off the list? Tanner Faust is coming in to race. Those are like our, our celebrity drivers or our crossover drivers, we're calling them. Then you look at the off road side of things, and we got, uh, it, it looks like we got uh, Andrew Carlson coming in, short course racer. Got Mia Chapman, short course racer turned desert racer coming in. Seth Quintero, you know him, UTV racer coming in. He's a big sim racer as well. Everybody that I'm talking also sim races. We've got um, 
man, who else do we have coming in on the offer? It's like, oh, Ronnie Anderson. How can we leave Ronnie Anderson off the list? Uh, you know, it's one of those where I'm, uh, you know, and that's the off-road side coming in. And then we've got like 10 of the best sim racers in the world. Mitchell DeYoung. You know Mitchell DeYoung. we got uh, Cam Peterson. He races for me and Jim Beaver Esports as well as my entire Jim Beaver Esports team. Um, you know, and they're all coming in as well as Josh Fox. He ra- races for Williams Esports. Um, so we've got some amazing, talented kids coming in. And we're going to throw them all into one race. All these personalities into one race race or one event i should say it's actually four races so these drivers are actually gonna have to run pro two trucks and pro four trucks twice four total races to determine a world cup winner we're going to be racing at wild horse pass motorsports park and wild west motorsports park both both venues and you're gonna have to run pro two and pro four trucks at them both it is going to be on the iRacing service we are going to be live streaming it we're bringing in tv quality live stream it will be uh, evan pasako he is uh, the e nascar host he's also a monster jam host myself i'll be do- doing color commentary and then tiffany stone who uh, obviously uh, you know her from this show as well as uh, you know as everything else she does in motorsports and short course but uh, you know she is going to be sitting third chair so we are packaging this whole thing. We're putting up a big bunch of money, prizes. We're bringing in all these personalities, and they are going to throw it down um, in one wild and crazy race. Saturday, April 11th. Uh, definitely be following me on social media for all the details. Uh, we'll have it on my YouTube channel, my Twitch channel, my Facebook page, as well as everybody else's Facebook page. General Tire is going to be carrying the broadcast. And it looks like we've got quite a few affiliates jumping in. But uh, I got to tell you, this is going to be, I'm very, very excited. You know me, I've uh, got a big investment into sim racing, but this is going to be an event like sim racing has never seen before. You know, NASCAR is doing their pro invitational thing. IndyCar is doing theirs. But this one, let me tell you, it's going to be blockbuster. If you're an off-road fan, you don't want to miss this one. April 11th, 3 o'clock Pacific time. Boom. We're going to do it to it. And uh, it is going to be epic. Um, You know, so uh, I, you're going to have a whole lot more of that coming out from me. But, uh, you know, it's funny. Just I become uh, – I don't want to say I've become, but I think the industry, one of the interesting takeaways from everybody sitting at home is everybody is getting creative. When it comes to content, everybody is getting creative. Uh, I know we have had to get really creative. I'm actually getting ready to drop another, uh, another podcast uh, with my good friend Jonathan Coyle. Um, you know him. Uh, he's been on uh, my, my Project Action podcast quite a bit. Uh, we're doing something called All Things Awesome. We're going to drop first season of that. Um, it is going to be our 80s season uh, next week on uh, Apple Podcasts, my website, and then through my uh, podcast network. Um, but, uh, you know, he and I, we're going to take a bunch of topics and wrap out. One's 80s movies, one's 80s video games, another one is uh, 80s cartoons. Uh, second season will come here in about a month. We'll drop four more episodes. That We've got an intro episode, too, so that's four total episodes for season one. But uh, we're, we're just cranking out content. We're, we're trying to be a, a content machine. But I look at what's happening in the industry, and people are getting very creative in their lives, their, fa- their Instagram lives. I, every time I tune into Instagram, more and more people are live. It's kind of crazy um, how many people are actually going live on Instagram. Same with Facebook. So, um that's really kind of exploded that outlet. You know, I, I've fielded so many calls from people wanting to start podcasts during this. Um, you know, basically Amazon your equipment, and then boom, it shows up uh, to your door, and you can start a podcast. People wanting help with that. People are going to start vlogs, you know, video logs on Facebook and things like that. You know, and I think if the takeaway from this whole, you know, very very unfortunate, brutal virus that is you know taking its hold on this country and the entire world is is people have actually got very creative they're staying at home and they're using their minds and i think that's that's really kind of cool because i think it's it's shaping the industry moving forward what is happening in this period of time that we're in it's like a capsule of time that's going to shape the industry because you know what is it zoom right the video chat i don't know how many zooms i've been on um you know and and uh People are Skyping. People are doing things. People are communicating in different ways. You know, I'm one of those guys. I would jump on an airplane and I'd fly across the country for an hour and a half meeting. Now we've learned we don't necessarily have to do that. But I think with content, creativity, people are learning. Like, you can stay at home and still accomplish things. And I think we're in an interesting dynamic because once things get fired back up, I think events are going to be huge. There's going to be so many people at events around the country just because they haven't been able to. Movies, people are going to pack movie theaters, bars, restaurants, live TV. I think it's going to be amazing because we haven't had it for so long. 
Um, but after, you know, kind of that initial hit comes back, I think people are really going to lay back on some of the stuff they created and they learned how to do during this time where everybody's sitting at home. You know, they're streaming video games, just everything has, uh, has you know, the content creators have got crazy because we've all got partners. We've all got jobs, you know, and it's how do you stay relevant in this time, um, you know, and keep people entertained. We've got some very entertaining things coming out and, and done at a very high quality and a high, very high level. So that has me really, really excited. Uh, but you know what else has me excited? Kelly Earnhardt. Yes, she is on the show, and that is coming up next. You don't want to go anywhere because Kelly Earnhardt, yes, she's going to be right here on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. Hang tight. It's going to get fun. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Don't just shred your way through any off-road rugged terrain. Get into gear with GSP XTV and let us redefine your adventure. The GSP advantage of quality and performance sets the standard for UTV axles. We strive to provide premium ATV and UTV axles to keep you shreddy ready. Kick up some dirt and get in the driver's seat with GSP XTV. With over 35 years of experience, drive with a company you can trust. Drive with GSP. For more information, please visit us at gspxtv.com today. You're listening to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. All killer and no filler. I'd like to welcome one of my guests to the show this week, uh, Kelly Earnhardt Miller. Uh, well, welcome, Kelly. Good to, uh, good to have you on the show. Well, thank you, Jim. I'm happy to be here and uh, in the midst of all of this that's going on. So it's good to to speak to people and, and feel like things are a little bit normal. <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I think everything's become virtual, right, in, in so many different ways. And I know I, I, when we first signed on for this interview, I don't know, it was probably about six weeks ago now, uh, we, we put this date in. i got to tell you, the world is a completely different place, and this interview is probably going to start completely different the way I had envisioned it. But uh, how are things over there? I mean, I'm in the Southwest. I've got a professional off-road team. I know what's going on here, but from what I understand, things are completely different in Charlotte. I mean, how's things with the race team? I mean, you know, obviously I know a lot of teams have sent people home. I mean, what's going on there in, uh, you know, in the Charlotte area? Yeah, well, here in North Carolina, we have the stay-at-home order issued by the governor. So we're, you know, uh, adhering to that order uh, through April 30th. We're not an essential business. Therefore, uh, we aren't working. Uh, You know, there's a few employees that you get to deem essential um, to kind of carry on a few things that have to get done, right? Um, but uh, but for the most part, everyone's at home, and those that are being uh, that are able to telework are, are working. But you know, with race cars, it's um, you know difficult to to turn riches at home on the race cars. So none of that's happening, of course. But um, you know, we're just taking each. Uh, we're kind of taking things week by week and uh, determining you know w- what we can do. Obviously doing a lot of things virtual through Zoom and a lot of meetings and, and calls and things like that. And, um, you know, it is it's it is awesome to see what you can get done when the group comes together and, and with the use of technology. Um, some people are saying that they're actually, you know, more busy than they have in, been in the office itself. So, uh, you know, being at home sometimes allows you to focus and do different things unless you've got screaming kids and you're having to do their schoolwork. But, um so just a lot of different things, you know. People, a lot of people are in different situations depending on uh, what their work and home life is like. So it's quite crazy, unlike anything I've ever been a part of. Yeah, well, and I know with me too. You know, I, I've got between the media company and then my race program, we've got a lot of uh, you know financial partners and backers and things like that. And I know with you guys, even it's to another level with with NASCAR. But you guys still have sponsors that you have to take care of. You're still trying to figure out budgets for the rest of the year, you know, year whatever that looks like. You're still trying to deliver some kind of value via social media and content and digital stuff during this uh, during this ta- downtime. So I'm assuming you are, are are super busy just on the business side, trying to put everything together for whenever things do get started back, right? 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've told most people that just in the conversation, I'm trying to figure out what's going on with our business that, you know, for, for people like us that depend on sponsorship and depend on, you know, that sponsorship for events and it's event driven and we're not racing, we really don't know what the effect is going to be until we know how much we are going to be racing and when, and when that's going to be, right? So so this could be a, a six, nine-month process in terms of trying to figure out if we'll be able to run our full schedule for the NASCAR Xfinity Series and things like that. So I really don't know, you know, kind of the financial outcome of things until much later. And so trying to figure out how you continue uh, what you're doing now and, and all that kind of stuff is, is quite challenging. But um, our social media marketing departments within the race team uh, have really dug deep and they're repurposing content and making new content. And, you know, uh, Fox and uh, NBC and iRacing are working together to bring these virtual iRacing events. Um, I don't know if they're doing that with uh, you guys yet in the off-road space, but um, we watched the World of Outlaws dirt lake models last night on television so they're repurposing you know they're 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 reinventing themselves in terms of this eye racing and this virtual racing uh which has been great because we've been able to utilize you know our partners in from that standpoint as well so yeah you're just looking at things really differently and um i've seen some very clever things and some some really cool things happening um you know within the other teams just on how they're using social media and some of the things they're doing so yeah well, and I know I'm, I'm actually, uh, uh, last year, uh, iRacing, I, I'm a franchise holder in eNASCAR, the Coca-Cola series like you guys are. So I've actually got to know your brother a little bit through our private, uh, our private chat and things like that that we've got for, for some of the team owners. But I know us, like, it's been phenomenal because we've actually had new money coming into the team during this whole thing just because – that's the only place where people can get in front of other people, you know, at this point, as far as racing goes. It's our, our business side is actually blown up on the esports side just because it's the only thing happening right now, you know? Yeah, that's really awesome. Um, you know, I've been, uh, and I, I don't know, you know, the, the financial aspects of your world, but, you know, in our world, it's like, for me, it's a catch between, you know, what you're doing on the virtual racing side and the e-racing side and the value that you're delivering versus what you're doing, you know, in when the real cars hit the racetrack and the value you're delivering and what it takes to do both things are obviously uh, quite different financially and just trying to strike that balance, you know, and, 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 uh, figure all those things out. So, um, it's, uh, it's, it's been interesting and it's, it's a new challenge for us and a new way of looking at things and doing things. Um, and we, we haven't really found the new income stream because we're trying to (laughs) deliver value to the current partners that are actually, you know, missing being on the track, people like Hellman's and and things like that. So we're trying to kind of, uh, utilize that eye racing for that purpose. Yeah. Well, and you know, and here's the question, and this is just kind of forward looking at the industry. Obviously we've had this hiccup to start this year. Uh, you know, there's been a couple of races run and it doesn't matter what series you're in. I guess IndyCart's a little bit different cause they haven't run any, but, um, you know, NHRA, I know off-road, we had a couple and everything paused, but I'm looking ahead at, at 2021 and, you know, honestly about June, those really heavy conversations on 2021 start, you start happening with, you know, and, and that's where the big chunk of the budgets come and, you know, and, and there's a little bit to be found later, but those big financial conversations start happening in about the summer. And I'm kind of nervous about 2021. Yeah. We've got money committed to 2020, but then looking at 2021, I'm like, man, depending on where we're at, I don't even know when those conversations will happen. And, and I, I got a feeling a lot of people scale back and I think it's got me nervous. Nervous not only for what I do, but for NASCAR, IndyCar, NHRA, because we're all in the same boat here. And it, I, I don't know, 2021 has me a little bit nervous. I don't know about you. It does. Uh, the same conversations are happening here and the same questions are being, uh, you know, we're, we're wondering and questioning the same thing. And I think that's why we've been, you know, trying to uh, to, to do as much as we can using our social platforms and, and using the network of fans that we have and, and using the virtual racing that we can so that, you know, you can continue to deliver value and continue to give these folks something to think about because uh, you're right, we're, you know, we've got dates here over the spring and summer where we were supposed to be talking about renewing for 2021. And if you're not on the racetrack by then, you know, those are going to be some, some, some different conversations. And, uh, you know, I think people are going to take pause and say, well, let's see what's happening for, you know, 2021st. And, and then of course they have to um, assess the impact of all this on their own businesses as well. So, um, you know, so, so much going on and, uh, Every day I just, I hear about things, you know, that, that I didn't really, that 
I don't think about being an issue, but uh, I'm on the board of a, a local um, 501c3 here that uh, works with traumatized kids through the the Department of Social Services and, and different entities, and, and these kids come to our group homes, and, you know, we work with them uh, to try to get uh, whatever trauma they've experienced in their life and try to get them on a better path. And, and it's affecting that business, you know. It's affecting our ability to serve these kids and help these kids and all of this. So it's just there's so much going on in the world right now. There's so much up in the air. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and my wife's a school teacher, you know, she's, she's at home. My daughter's at home and it's like, they're, they're learning from at home. And my wife's trying to do her best to teach students from our house where they're sitting at their house. And I'm like, it's just, it's got the world in a, in a, in a really interesting place. And it, it doesn't matter if you're talking racing or, or anything else. I think it's all it got us all just, uh, I, I don't. I don't even know. I, I'm just. Uh, I think uh, I, along with everybody else, is just hoping. Uh, you know, this thing we can we can get this thing, I guess, passed on, and we can get back to business sooner rather than later. I guess you know some kind of normalcy. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, yeah. it's really, really cumbersome. And my husband was saying this morning because uh, we have one. We have two children. They're in different school systems, and uh, one of them is doing. You know, doing their work every day. We've got. We get regular uh, information from the teacher on what we're supposed to be doing. And the other one, they haven't figured it out yet. And we're three weeks into not being in school, and, and my husband and I were talking this morning. There's going to be this gap. Yeah. Of And we're not supposed to go back to school till May 15th, even if we go back to school here in North Carolina. So there's going to be this huge gap of not learning because I don't think parents can teach these concepts, you know, as well as our teachers, right? And um so it's it's really interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah. You know, and I want to kind of go back to the race team a little bit because through all this, one thing I've always appreciated about junior motorsports, and not just now, but, uh, you know, in the years past, they, you guys have been very progressive in your approach to marketing and, and the team and things like that. And obviously, you know, you, you've got the race program, but, I mean, you know, we, we've got, you know, you know Dale's podcast network, Dirty Mo Radio, and everything he's got going there with podcasts. Obviously, you guys were some of the first uh, with E NASCAR to really heavily invest there. I, you know, obviously your social media, you guys are always developing content, things like that. You know, I, I mean, do you, do you feel like that progression and the way you've pushed? I mean, in times like this, actually, you know, is, is a big benefit to you guys just because uh, you know you do have these other assets that you can rely on where a lot of teams don't. Yeah, I do. And, you know, I'm thankful for uh, the leadership uh, that Joe Mattis, who's over our sponsorship and sponsor services and, and licensing, um, because he's he, he that's been very apparent over the last, you know, five. Well, really, since 2008, really, since, you know, the last crash of the economy happened. Um, and we really had to get creative that, you know, our 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 paint schemes uh, and that advertising wasn't just about being a paint scheme, and it was so much more to it. And as marketing's evolved, as social media's evolved, and all these different ways that we can go to market have evolved, uh, we've been really flexible and adaptable. And, um, you know, I'm just really thankful that I got good people because Mike Davis, uh, who runs our Dirty Mo Media and our podcast um, uh, network and, and, you know, oversees the Dell Junior Download that you're talking about, you know, really – that was his idea, and um, and we, you know, the the cool thing for the company is that we realize and we invest in it, and we put the resources there, uh, and we've made investment there, like you alluded to, that, um, you know, a lot of teams either haven't or can't, and that's not where their focus is being, and, and that right now is really, you know, that's one of the groups when I talked about some people are working harder, Dirty Mo Media is one of the groups that's actually working harder from home than uh, and and more creatively because they're you know doing their podcast through Zoom and still able to get those on our NBC network um, and and play the Dell Junior Download and those kind of things through the television. So um, they've just been really thinking of creative ways and they're working on another project with NBC called Lost Speedways and and trying to finish that up. And so um, yeah, I'm thankful that we you know made the commitment to invest there and and put some resources there and that we've got. Uh, some really smart and creative thinkers. Um, I'm a real black and white person, so marketing yeah. uh, and creativity is not my strong point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we've got a whole lot more with Kelly Earnhardt when we return here to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. 
I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a down and dirty radio show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP 1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris. Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. Life is all about sound. The sound of sports, the sound of the racetrack, and the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast, and be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Welcome back to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Right now we got Kelly Earnhardt Miller on the line, knee-deep in this interview. And, and Kelly, I kind of I kind of want to go back to the beginning, you know, because we've talked about kind of the current state of things. But I kind of want to go back to things because, I mean, you were immersed into racing at a really young age, obviously, with your dad and, and things like that. I mean, it was racing or the racing business. I mean, when when did that come along and you decided, hey, this is something I want to be involved in? You know what I mean? Or, or was it from the beginning? It was yeah. like you didn't know anything else and you just logically that that was kind of the career path. Cause, I mean, you went to college it, coming out of college. There had to have been other opportunities and you've kind of always pursued this path yeah well I really you know growing up like you know just thinking about being a teenager and making those decisions to go to college dad really didn't uh um it was you know the late 80s I graduated in 1990 from high school so you know my dad was very successful in his career at that point Dillon Hart Incorporated really wasn't a thing yet and um and so I really didn't think about necessarily working in racing. I've always been around it as, you know, from the com- competitor side of it. But um, uh, And then I did some racing myself in the mid-90s uh, while I was in college and finishing up college. And, um, you know, that, that didn't progress into a career path for me at the time. Um, and I was working and, and working on, this, on a souvenir business um, called Sports Image at the time. And so 
I, I went to school, to college, to, for a criminal justice major um, and then quickly changed that to a business major so that I, I thought that maybe that would be a more broad uh, concept to get an education in. So I'm glad I did that because then you fast forward to 2001 when we lost our dad and then coming to work for Dell Jr., um, you know, all of that has really served its purpose and, and prepared me to, to do what I'm doing, you know, today and have been doing for the last 20 years. But I really didn't, you know, dad didn't direct us into kind of, well, do you think you want to do this? or Do you think you want to do that? We just, um, uh, I just went to college, got the degree, got my business degree and come out of there and said, okay, where, you know, where am I going to apply for jobs at? <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, I want to ask, too, like in the past, you know, I would really say in the last 15 years, but, uh, you know, it kind of started a little bit before that. But, uh, you know, a lot of people want to talk women in racing. And obviously right now, you know, Haley Deegan's kind of uh, the big name to talk about. You know, and there's some some girls racing, in the, you know, females racing in the truck series. We know Danica Patrick. But I look at women in racing as a much larger picture. And I deal on the business side quite quite a bit, probably more than I do with the actual drivers that I interview, you know. And I look on the business side and I see a massive influx, I mean, of decision makers and, and women who have done really, really well in the industry and, and really starting to kind of shift and, and change. Do you, do you feel like, uh, you know, do you feel like, one, you were a part of that, you know, because you've kind of been a voice for, for women in this industry. But, uh, you know, do you, do you feel like, you know, you have seen the change that I've seen? Because, I, I mean, I, I you can kind of go down a Rolodex of, uh, of names at a lot of these companies, and it, it just seems like there's more and more women that are cycling into these, you know, the, these really important jobs. Yeah, I definitely have seen the same change that you have. And, you know, I think about uh, when I raced late models, I mean, I was one of maybe, let's say, in all the divisions, you know, your Saturday night racing from your bombers to your street stocks to your limiteds to your late models, you know, maybe three to five females were out there racing. Now you go to a Saturday night short track and you might see, you know, 10 to 15 females out there racing. You know, the pool's gotten a little bigger um, in terms of, of – you know, the the females being interested in it. But on the business side, I've definitely seen, uh, you know, just to, the same kind of increase. Um, you know, back when, if I think about back in the day with my dad and, and RCR, there were very few women, even in the roles that we have a lot of women in now, like PR and marketing, yeah. things like that. Back even then, there wasn't that many women in those roles. And, um, you know, it was predominantly male. And uh, so I've, I've definitely seen the same shift. And, you know, I think a lot of that has to do with the societal shift that we see and, and um, uh, just, you know, in totality and the way the world um, views those things as well that have, you know, crept down into our sports sports world and um, how things are more open. And, you know, sometimes I even think that sometimes the lines may be getting a little bit too close, you know, where, where, <laughs> where we're merging the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts and all these different yeah. things, you know, but that's for a different conversation. But, um, but yeah, I've, I've definitely seen the trend to, um, you know, where, where there's more of a balance and, and there's a lot of female executives in the sports world. You know, you look at Sports Business Journal and you see, um, you know, a, a lot of great women doing a lot of good things. But I think most of us don't want to look at it like, oh, yeah. this is a woman and this is a man doing these things, you know. And um, I get asked that question all the time about being a, a female uh, in this business. And I, I've really never approached it like that because I look at myself, I'm just an Earnhardt, you know, yeah. and Earnhardt's in my NASCAR world have a legacy and a reputation to uphold. And that's just what I'm here doing. And, uh, I've never really, you know, I, I know the female aspect of it gets looked at very often, but, uh, I've not had the challenges that I think a lot of females have had trying to come into, uh, the sports world and the male, you know, male dominated sports world, just because I think I had, had a little bit of a leg up, you know, being an Earnhardt and the reputation of my dad and, and those kinds of things have been very helpful for me. Yeah. Well, that being said, you, you may have had, uh, you know, some doors open that uh, may have not been open with, with your last name, but do you feel like you were also under the microscope more than anybody else because of your last name? Oh, that's definitely, um, definitely the case in a lot of ways. Um, uh, but, um, you know, I just, I'm, I, I've, I, I hate, I don't want to say this cause I don't want to sound cocky, but I'm just, I'm a confident individual. Um, uh, you know, I come prepared. Um, I, you know, I, there's not a lot that you can, when I'm in a business setting in a business meeting, um, you know, there, I don't show a lot of weakness in terms of anybody really being able to say anything and say, well, you know, she's not cut out for this or she doesn't have, you know, she can't do this or that. Um, I pretty much, 
been able to to do what I set out to do and and can do and have proved that you know I have a seat at the table and I belong here. So yeah. Well, and I, I think, you know, you have a seat at the table, you belong there. But I, I look at junior motorsports as a whole, and I, and I you know, and obviously I don't know everything. and um, But it, I, I, I see junior motorsports as one of those organizations that makes truly calculated business decisions, where you see a lot of, a lot of teams come in or a lot of uh, people in this industry, and they make kind of some crazy decisions, and people look back and go, how did they ever think that that would be sustainable? But I feel like Junior Motorsports, you guys have been very calculated in your processes. You don't overextend yourself. You know, it's it's very, very factual and decision-based, whereas a lot of others in the industry don't. I mean, you guys have been very dedicated to Xfinity and things like that. And a lot of people go, oh, why aren't they running a cup team? Well, you guys just haven't, you know, you haven't gone that way, and I feel like you, everything you do has a reason. And, you know, and, and I think that a lot of that, you know, comes back to you. Yeah, I think we, you know, ultimately when we have those conversations, when we're talking about what options that there are, we come back to the core of why we started doing this to begin with. And when we always come back to to those objectives and the core of, you know, giving people opportunity to succeed uh, in the Xfinity Series and and, uh, kind of that, you know, Dell's always looked at it kind of like from the underdog perspective, you know, and giving people a chance. And it started out kind of from a driver perspective of giving those guys chances to drive race cars and move up. But, you know, we, it's grown because of the, the number of people that we have here now. We have 125 employees um, that, you know, it's crew chiefs, it's it's PR people. I mean, we've been so successful and thankful and, and lucky that we've had, uh, you know, some of our PR reps move up into the Cup Series. We've had crew chiefs move up into the Cup Series and engineers and people like that and drivers and so on and so forth. But, um you know, we when we go to making those decisions, we just always look at it from the standpoint of of sticking to those core values and 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 trying not to to waver from from what our objective is. And I think that's what helps you, you know, be calculated and make the best decisions for your company. Yeah, well, that, I guess that's a good segue to to talking about after twenty minutes what what, what you're here to talk about. That is your new book that comes out <laughs> April seventh. Uh, Drive nine lessons to win in uh, business and in life. Uh, you know, and one thing I, my takeaway from this book, Kelly, is I think a lot of people, you know, you writing a book, Kelly Earnhardt, they thought it was just going to be a biography, and you were going to tell, you know, it, you know, and and you took a different stance with this, and obviously. This, you know, you infuse stories and things like that in, in your life into this book, but it, it's so much more than that. And, and kind of take us behind the premise of this book because, uh, you know, I'm looking down and even even the nine lessons that you have, I'm looking at that and going, these are completely different than anybody else that would have been writing a book similar to this. Yeah, well, um, I thought the same thing when I was going to write a book that it was going to be a biography kind of thing. You know, hey, what's it like to grow up as Dell's daughter? Because that really was my intent. And, uh, um, I was talking to the publishers that published Dale's book and told them, you know, well, they said, have you ever thought about writing a book? And I said, well, if I wrote a book, this is what I want to write it about. And I was telling them about, um, you know, my years in therapy and kind of this family origin stuff that I felt like I dealt with and um, my dad not being available to me and and some of the things that I felt like uh, decisions I made in my adult life that were really complicated by, um you know, how I grew up. And so they, they sat there and listened to me and, and they left and, and the lady called me up and she said, you know, Kelly, I appreciate your story and all that's wonderful, but I don't think people want to hear about that. You know, she said, why don't you focus on business and you can tell a little bit about your story and set it up, uh, which is, you know, what I've done in the book and, and then share your experience as a business person uh, and just in life, you know, to, to share some of the ways that you go about your daily life uh, uh, here at Junior Motorsports and, you know, just my home life. So that's kind of how it morphed into what you're reading. But like most people, yeah, I started out with wanting to write a biography. Yeah, well, and, you know, and it, it's funny, too, because you go down and I'm, I'm just looking at your list of things, you know, and, uh, you know, and right off the top, authentic and approachable. You know, and, and that's one thing that I've learned about NASCAR is I, I've worked in motorsports and dealt with everything from NHRA, IndyCar, Supercross, NASCAR. I, obviously, I race off-road. I, I do interviews myself, things like that. But NASCAR has always been a very, out of all the motorsports, closed off. And it's been very tough to approach people within the industry. And you are, are completely anti that, where you're very approachable, you're very out there, you're accessible and things like that. And I went right off the top. I mean, this to me, anybody that knows motorsports knows, man, Kelly is different. This book is different because that wouldn't have been the top thing on, on pretty much anybody's list other than yours. Yeah, I think it's hard. And, you know, a lot of people do feel that way um, about people. It's 
it's it's which that's very interesting to me because you know we're the the group the sport is so family oriented and and down to earth and um you know it 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 seems that we would mostly all be approachable but i do get um you know just interacting with fans and meeting people um you know they they're surprised at how down to earth and and approachable that i am and um you know i'm just like anybody else out there i'm tootling to the grocery store the same way they are, you know, whatever they're doing. I'm, I mean, I don't have people that do that for me. I do it myself. I take care of things myself and that's how I like to do it, you know? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I mean, looking at this book, obviously, uh, it, you know, it hits things April, it hits shelves April 7th. Uh, I'm lucky enough to have a, a copy in my hand right now, but, uh, I mean, if there's one takeaway from this book, I mean, what, what do you want fans, uh, tuning in to, uh, to, to get out of it? You know, I just hope they, um, you know, learn something about me and, and the way that I've, uh, uh, you know, done, handled this business and um, uh, handled my life. And, you know, maybe there's something in there that, that will touch them and be able to help them change the way they work or live their life. You know, I mean, if there's just one little nugget in there that's something that they didn't think of or, or something like that might help them in a situation or relationship or something of that nature. You know, I just wanted to share my experience and, um, you know, our, our NASCAR fans are so great. They want to know as much as they can, you know, so as much as you can put down, as much as you can tell, as much as you can talk about, they're very interested. So, um, you know, I just hope they enjoy it. All right. Well, Kelly, I appreciate you taking the time today to do this interview. Been uh, been wonderful catching up, yeah. and uh, you know, lo- uh, you know, excited to have that uh, book hitting store shelves next week. And uh, you know, everybody, go out and uh, grab a copy. Yeah, if people want to know more, they can go to kellyearnhartdrive dot com, and they can find out where they can purchase the book in these crazy times that we're all experiencing. Man, really, uh, really fortunate to have Kelly on the on the line. Appreciate her taking the time to uh, to call in. Uh, wow. Go and get that book drive nine lessons to win. I know you're uh, sitting at home, probably have a, a lot to do. Uh, pre-order that comes out April 7th on Amazon uh, or anywhere you get your books, but uh, you can get that pre-order in and, uh, you know, have it land at your doorstep next week. And, uh, you know, I think it'll be, uh, uh, it'll be a solid read for you. That's, uh, that's definitely for sure. So, uh, much appreciated for her, uh, taking the time to come in. So, uh, yeah, I guess, um, we are going to take a short break. We come back, we'll wrap up hour number one, our power hour here on Sirius XM channel 211. Uh, those of you tuning in everywhere else, you will get hour number two though. Uh, and if you uh, are on Sirius XM channel 211, check us out. Apple podcast, hit that subscribe button or down to dirty show.com. You can get the rest in hour number two. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we are uh, going to take a short commercial break. We'll return wrapping up hour number one right here on the general tire down to dirty radio show powered by Polaris razor conditions off the pavement are always changing so why settle for a light bar that just turns on and off the rigid adapt is a revolutionary new light bar that will automatically select from eight beam patterns that range from a widespread 90 degree flood to a 15 degree spot based on your vehicle speed try that with your knockoff light bar a dash mounted controller allows the user to toggle between adaptive mode beam patterns and rgbw accent lighting with adapt it's easier than ever to own the night don't just shred your way through any off-road rugged terrain. Get into gear with GSP XTV and let us redefine your adventure. The GSP advantage of quality and performance sets the standard for UTV axles. We strive to provide premium ATV and UTV axles to keep you shreddy ready. Kick up some dirt and get in the driver's seat with GSP XTV. With over 35 years of experience, drive with a company you can trust. Drive with GSP. For more information, please visit us at gspxtv.com today. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Welcome back here to uh, to the closeout of uh, hour number one here on the Gentle Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, our power hour uh, that airs on Sirius XM Channel 211, Dan Patrick Radio. Uh, we'll be back with hour number two here for uh, those of you tuning in elsewhere. Um, but uh, make sure and uh, yeah those of you tuning in on hour number two hit me up on twitter at jim beaver 15 let me know you're listening and uh, also any questions we're opening the segment uh you know with uh with a lot of time on our hands so uh let me know if you got any fan questions uh hour number two we've also got an interview with uh, my good friend travis pastrana yeah mr tp 199 we've got a uh a best of interview we're going to be airing with him uh so i think i think you guys really enjoy that one i know last week we aired a best of with toby price really really good feedback on that so uh 
You know, we're, we're dipping to the well. We've got, what, eight years worth of content here uh, with some epic interviews. So uh, I'm handpicking some. We're, we might go really deep into the archives here uh, coming up. Maybe some stuff with uh, Sal Fish, uh, you know, of Off-Road Fame. Maybe some old Ken Block interviews. Maybe a little Jason Ellis thrown in. Bucky Lassick. I don't know. We're going to have to see what direction we want to head here on the show. But uh, we got, like I said, uh, eight years, eight, nine years worth of content to dig through. So I'm kind of enjoying some of these best of interviews. So if you've got anybody you would actually like to hear and one of our old interviews re-aired or uh, anybody you just like to hear on the show in general, man, I'm all ears at Jim Beaver 15 on social media. Let me know who it is and, uh, you know, what you're thinking. And we'll try and book them for the show because, uh, like I said, we got uh, a lot of time to kill, a lot of time on our hands right here. So, uh, uh, yeah, we are. Uh, we're going to wrap up hour number one, and when we come back with hour number two, I'll open things up. Maybe we'll talk a little bit of Tiger King. Yeah, Tiger King. We might go there in hour number two of the show, and then obviously Travis Pastrana on tap as well. So hang tight. It's going to be one hell of a ride right here on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you, but you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online, in syndication on networks across the U.S., and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Welcome back here to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, kicking off our number two and uh, getting a little sidetracked here, uh, all kinds of stuff blipping, blipping my screen. We got uh, we got a ton going on in motorsports right now. So uh, I think you know in this next segment we're definitely going to uh, dive into uh, some of the storylines and and you got to appreciate iRacing and sim racing and what they've uh, what they've been able to uh, accomplish and and really kind of be a crutch for the motorsports industry. Give all these series an outlet things like that. Maybe we'll get into that, but I do know uh, I've been hit up because a lot of people know I've got a big esports program, Jim Beaver Esports. You should go and I'll, I'll give that shameless plug. Follow our social media channels for that if you're already following mine. Just Jim Beaver Esports on uh, all major platforms. Um, but uh, we do have a, a great relationship with iRacing. Uh, PR-Jim Beaver, if you use PR-Jim Beaver, that is going to get you, I believe, a 50% uh, discount when you sign up for iRacing. So a lot of people sitting at home ordering steering wheels, maybe some sim rigs if you're going all in. But, uh, yeah, 
PR dash Jim Beaver. That'll get you fifty percent off at iRacing. So uh, definitely uh, use that code and uh, thank me later. But uh, I'm having a hell of a lot of fun uh, just in video games. I started playing video games with my daughter again. I know Nintendo's got a new game called Animal Crossing out. We both got villages we're playing. Uh, been into Mario Kart. I haven't played Mario Kart in years. Now we're, uh, we're I'm diving back into Mario Kart. And I got to tell you that's that's hella fun. That is hella fun. So uh, yeah, we, we <laughs> I don't know. I think a lot of people are interesting. I know I built a 3D puzzle. Yes, a 3D puzzle here last week uh, was Hel- Harry Potter Diagon Alley. Um, so uh, yeah, I think uh, the industry and people in general have got a lot of time on their hands. I actually was in Walmart about a week ago. Their board game and their puzzle aisle is literally cleaned out. I'm like, how rad is that? When was the last time an aisle at any toy store, any store across the country, the puzzle and, and board game aisle was cleared out? And it was. And I, I got to think playing cards have become like a commodity, almost like toilet paper and paper towels where you just can't get a deck of playing cards because everybody's sitting at home playing cards, right? I don't know. Um, it's just weird, weird times that we are in. And, uh, uh, you know, it, and it's funny to see, uh, you know, the stuff that uh, all of a sudden has, has become important that people didn't think was uh, quite some time ago. No, ammunition. That's another one. That's a rabbit hole we could go down. But uh, ammo, toilet paper, bottled water, paper towels. Yeah, those are those are the go to's along with dried pasta and canned goods. But anyways, we're going to take a short break and uh, we got a lot to talk about here on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. Uh, a lot more coming at you here in hour number two. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a down and dirty radio show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it, so when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP 1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris. Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. Life is all about sound, the sound of sports, the sound of the racetrack, and the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast, and be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Welcome back here to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, hour number two. 
And, uh, yeah, so just getting into the thick of things. One, how epic was that to have uh, Kelly Earnhardt Miller on the show in hour number one, man? What, uh, what, a, what a badass human being. Let's just, let's just be quite frank. Um, you know, what she has done for not only the world of motorsports, but women in motorsports, second to none. Uh, really, really excited to, to have her on the show, like I said before. Bucket, bucket list interview. Um, you know, we... So, uh, yeah, and we've got uh, what, even more. We're cranking it up in hour number two. Travis Pastrana, TP199, best of interview from him last fall. We're going to have that on the show. So uh, really excited to have Travis on. That was uh, one that was taken from episode number 400 that we had last year. Um, so uh, I, I'm really excited to have Travis on the show. Uh, I think uh, I think you guys are, are kind of – anytime you do, Travis is such an exciting guy, you know, and I've known him. I know him so well. You never know what uh, Travis you're going to get. Really excited to have him in my iRacing World Cup event that I'm hosting as well. So uh should be fun having, uh, having Travis, uh, you know, having Travis in that. It's Mr. Excitement, that's for sure. So, uh, uh, yeah, we're going to re-air that interview with, uh, with Travis. Uh, I tell you what, I, I had so much fun when I did the Razor Star Car, and he came and raced with Jolene Van Butte and I. Like, epic, epic good times like so so rad um so fun to have him in the in the in the car um but you know what was you know we were talking about some of this fun stuff that's kind of happened over uh over this quarantine and I, I hate to say fun because nobody's having fun with this but there has been some really good entertainment come out and uh i don't know if you guys have watched but i know i have tiger king what in the actual hell is going on um <laughs> Tiger King, yes, that is that show that's taken the world by storm and social media by storm. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you l- quite literally have l- been living under a rock for the past month. But Netflix drops this little documentary. It's like, what, seven, eight episodes on on a guy named Tiger King. So it's this gay, redneck, hillbilly, gun-toting tiger owner with his own zoo that he created. And... Uh, it's quite literally it go, you start off with episode 1 you don't really realize what you're getting into and you're like oh documentary you know this guy's kind of uh he's kind of quirky and he owns tigers yeah you don't really realize until you get into this that there's like blackmail and murder and uh, uh hitmen for hire and all this crazy like lying and and jail sentencing and like you don't realize how deep and like i could tell you I can't even tell you like if I if, nobody could create a plot this crazy Hollywood could come up with the most far fetched crazy Quentin Tarantino plot that they ever thought possible. And you know what? It wouldn't even be close to what Tiger King actually is. It's that crazy. And not only that, but he's become like king of the memes, king of the Internet. Every joke account, every meme account, every social media account is posting about Tiger King. How how bat beep crazy it is and uh it's so like what i find is funny is here's this guy who ran for president nobody's even heard of him like you know he ran what four years ago and then he ran for governor he ran for all this all he wanted to do was be famous he gets tossed in jail which was a racket he shouldn't be in jail and now he's in jail and he's actually become crazy famous in the united states and uh you know i don't know joe exotic I, i'm just saying if you guys haven't gone and watched tiger king yet you need to watch this i don't even know and it's funny you want to talk about nailing the drop window for a show if this show would have dropped a year ago nobody would have watched it if it dropped a year from now nobody would have watched it and Netflix couldn't plan this, but they, you know, they went and shot this thinking, ah, you know, it's probably got a, a ridiculously low budget. And, uh, you know, it's one of those where they probably thought, oh, we're going to drop it. It'll get some viewers, you know, and we'll make our money back or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think that they realized that this would be the content juggernaut. I would love to see the numbers of streams of people to Tiger King. I guarantee you it is. You want to talk about going viral? Tiger King is it. But it's funny. You want to talk about being at the right place at the right time and just downright damn lucky? That is Tiger King. You know, like I said, dropped a year prior, a year after, nobody would have watched this. You know, because it really is kind of a dumpster fire. But it's a good dumpster fire. It's a dumpster fire you want to watch. 
and uh, they drop it, and it was already a planned drop. It just happened that this damn pandemic was going to be happening, and uh, they drop it, and it quite literally is the only fresh content to drop on the internet that is not coronavirus. And so they drop it, and immediately people start watching it, and they're like, whoa, this is crazy. Tell their friends about it, this and that. 90% of the people watching Tiger King would have never watched it if it wasn't for this pandemic going on. And uh, it has become literally a national sensation. Joe Exotic has become a celebrity. And uh, poor dude is sitting in jail. But I wish that Joe Exotic, I hope, and I've said this before, I, I hope that President Trump, he's he's crazy. I mean, we got a reality show president, right? He, he's crazy enough that I'm I'm hoping that before he he gets out of office, or who knows, maybe he's going to get reelected. I'm not even going to try and predict the election. But I'm hoping sometime he just pardons Joe Exotic. Pardon him. Literally par- pardon him. That way this guy can go and do like the late night TV show talk circuit. Because people want more Joe Exotic like we do. And the sad part is, is poor dude is sitting in a jail. Like he could have his YouTube channel firing up and that would be going viral every single episode. But um, you want to talk about the crazy things that have happened in the pandemic. That is one of them. Joe Exotic, Tiger King. If you haven't watched it please go to netflix watch this your mind will be blown i tell everybody a lot of people watch episode one and then tune out and they're like this sucks no you gotta watch at least two episodes and by the end of episode two it starts getting its hooks in you and then by episode three you're like whoa by like episode four or five you're like face palm like whoa this is nuts how could this actually happen right and i actually said used the term face palm on the show that is uh, chalk that up to a once an eight years type of thing that I never thought would have happened. But, uh, yes, we have gone there. Crazy times. And uh, the Down and Dirty Radio Show actually used face palm. Um, so, uh, yeah, go and check that out. You know, th- my two takeaways from this entire, this entire coronavirus pandemic that we're still in. One, Tiger King. Two, iRacing. Yes, both things have completely, quite frankly, blown up. And uh, people are just going crazy. I mean, who would have thought that we would have video game racing on NBC Sports and Fox regularly? You know what I mean? Like, going into this year, nobody would have predicted it. Couldn't have predicted it, right? Nobody would have thought (laughs) a a, a gay, redneck, hillbilly um, polygamist with guns that owns tigers would go viral and be the number one watch show in the country, right? Nobody could have predicted that. Nobody could predict video game racing would be running live on NBC and on Fox and take the place of the real real thing. Nobody would have predicted any of this craziness, but it, it is crazy times right now. And uh, I don't know. Wh- what are your guys' takeaways from all this? I would love, love, love to hear what uh, my audience out there thinks of uh, – Tiger King in the world right now because uh, I got to tell you for the next month all bets are off nobody knows what's going to happen nobody has any idea all I can say is is please be safe and enjoy the craziness that has become the internet Um, it is definitely crazy times speaking of crazy times Travis Pastrana came on the show for episode number 400 and uh, we are going to uh, we're going to have a couple of interviews here well a couple we're gonna have a couple of segments with a big interview I did with Travis Pastrana right here on the show like I said these were uh, last fall for episode number 400 so Travis Pastrana when we come back here to the General Tire Down a Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. Conditions off the pavement are always changing. So why settle for a light bar that just turns on and off? The Rigid Adapt is a revolutionary new light bar that will automatically select from eight beam patterns that range from a widespread 90-degree flood to a 15-degree spot based on your vehicle's speed. Try that with your knockoff light bar. A dash-mounted controller allows the user to toggle between adaptive mode, beam patterns, and RGBW accent lighting. With Adapt, it's easier than ever to own the night. Don't just shred your way through any off-road rugged terrain. Get into gear with GSP XTV and let us redefine your adventure. The GSP advantage of quality and performance sets the standard for UTV axles. We strive to provide premium ATV and UTV axles to keep you shreddy ready. Kick up some dirt and get in the driver's seat with GSP XTV. With over 35 years of experience, drive with a company you can trust. Drive with GSP. For more information, please visit us at gspxtv.com today. 
Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. All right, I'd like to welcome uh, one of my guests to this very special 400th episode of the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, my good friend Travis Pastrana, TP. Welcome back to the show, buddy. Dude. It's been, uh, I don't know. We... 400. Holy cow. Yeah, I th- I think that's a that's a that's a big number, man. Dude, what, what do you think about that? Four hundred weeks, you know, that's crazy, man. It's like eight years I've been doing radio, and this was a show that wasn't supposed to last two episodes. So I don't know, we did something right somewhere along the line, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, heck of a job. Good, uh, good to be back on, man. It's been been a while since we got to hang out for sure. Yeah, I know. Uh, I was trying to think. I you know I, know, I think the last time we actually, I can't remember when we saw each other in person. I know you came and did Star Car with us at Vegas Torino. We had a I think we had more fun after we broke down than we actually did during the race. Um, <laughs> I, I appreciate it. I mean, on the technicality, I appreciate that technically uh, you, you had to pay up on that bet. That was, that was a shame. But... <laughs> uh, I went 10 feet and owed you a grand. I think you got $100 out of me, though. So, And I signed the $100 bill, so I'm sure it's floating around somewhere. But... Uh, I still got it. Yeah, that was uh, that was a good time. I was thinking back though. I think the first time I ever interviewed you on this show was um, you raced the Mint 400 in a trophy truck with Bryce. Uh, they fielded a truck for you, and uh, I think the over under on that race was is they thought nobody thought you'd go lap, and you ended up like freaking getting like fourth in trophy truck or something that race or something like that. But I think that was the first time I actually ever interviewed you, and uh, we actually ever had, I think a real conversation or something. So yeah, it's been, dude, that was, how long ago was that? That's had been six, seven years ago at least. Yeah, it was a while. It was my only, I kind of lied my way into it. Red Bull's like, you raced trophy trucks. Before. I was like, yeah, of course. <laughs> when I was Bryce to the desert, got like, you know, 20 minutes of testing. And, uh, it was, it was so funny because Red Bull and everyone there, they did the odds in Vegas and it was something like 50 to one that I wasn't going to make it, uh, the, past the, the end of the second lap. And I was like, man, so it probably slow. It's probably the only reason I made it to the end, but uh, but it also slowed me down a little bit. So I was catch twenty two. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was one thing I've learned about you hanging around you. Like, you, I, there's something about betting, and even if it's like a five dollar bet, like you will work your ass off like double time to win a bet. Like, if there's a bet involved in ninety nine percent of the time when you're involved, there's some kind of a side bet going with somebody. But I've learned, man. Like, I think it's these little bets that's really driven you through your career, man. Yeah, well, Nitro, it's, it's just a dollar bet, but I tell you, there's, um, you know, and it was actually, it was a, a five Aussie bet um, to, to come back and do X Games. I hadn't done it since like 2006 or seven, and then 2011, Booko, he's like, hey, old man, you couldn't, you couldn't hang if you won it in 2010. <laughs> I was like, oh, come on, man. So, so went for a, for a five Aussie bet, um, and uh, we both broke our collarbones like one day apart. And he's like, my doctors are better than yours. Um, and then he pulled out, and then and dropping in the last run, he's like, all right, I'll make it 20 if you double backflip in your run. So, so I mean, that was technically, that was probably one of my biggest bets. Other than that, that time, I, I beat you for 100 on technicality. That was, that was pretty good, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, people that don't <laughs> know. You bring that up through the show. Yeah. No, no. Well, <laughs> and people that don't know the bet that we're talking about. So, when Trav came and raced with uh, with Joe and I at, uh, at Vegas Torino, it was $1,000. Uh, so, whoever broke the car owed the other ones uh, $1,000 a piece. Uh, so Travis had driven the uh, car. Jolena did. I co-rode with her, and I was supposed to do like the last 200-mile stretch into, uh, into Reno to finish this thing up. So Trav, um, Trav hands it over, and we're in this little town of Gabs, like literally in the middle of nowhere. It's like a 30-mile way, one way in and out. And uh, I get in the car, and I drove. I literally drive the car 10 feet, and it blows up. And uh, Travis, who had done like 300 I mean, miles in the car, yeah, uh, he, he, immediately I get out and I'm like, "Well, I think we're done." And like you were jumping up and down, I won the bet. I won the bet. I'm like, "Dude, this is a." I was like, "I drove it 10 feet." Jolene's like, "Jimmy, you don't have to pay <laughs> it me." Made it. it made it. To you. It made it to you. My job's done. Yeah. <laughs> So, oh, yeah, 10 feet cost me uh, technically a grand. And you only got 100 bucks out of me, but it was what it was. But hey, you, you you put an extra zero at the end of that just to, you know, yeah. in Sharpie. So I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I did do that. I forgot about that. I wrote, a, I wrote an extra grand, a, thou, a zero on. So, yeah, what a good time, though, man. I mean, you know, here's the question for you. I mean, you get the chance to do that. I mean, obviously, you're doing Nitro stuff. You're still doing a lot of rally racing and things like that with Subaru and stuff like that. I mean, how, how are things for you, man? I mean, because we could talk about Nitro and, 
and, and and do the thing. But I mean, you know, and and talk about all these events you got going on and Evil Live and all this other stuff. But I mean, let, let's kind of let, let's just talk. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, how how are you? I mean, you've got a wife, an amazing wife, a couple of kids that uh, I think the world has fallen in love with. Man, I mean, you know, you you kind of living the dream, right? You're just kind of getting to pick and choose what you want and and kind of just have fun, have fun, right? No, everyone keeps going, oh, remember the good old days? I'm like, dude, we're, I mean, I'm very, very fortunate, and uh, I've been fortunate to have an awesome crew of people around me and, and great sponsors all the way through, and, yeah, I've had a lot of injuries. Um, but at the end of the day, man, I get to do what I love to do, and yeah, I really took the beginning this year to uh, try to slow down a little bit. I wasn't very good at it, but, um, yeah, it's just, I mean, it's awesome. My, uh, my six-year-old, uh, or she just turned six uh, yesterday and started school today, so pretty uh pretty rad first day of kindergarten and um my uh my little five-year-old she's been doing awesome driving her little, little razor the kids absolutely love it scare me to death we've got between i don't know like four of us there's about 80 acres of trails um behind my house and my you know four and five-year-old or now four and six-year-old are both driving the razors good enough to we, we had to had to get a second one and they're just terrorizing through there and it scares me because I used to, they used to be afraid to go back by themselves. And now they're just like, they just get on. They know how to start it by themselves. And if the doors open, they're just, they're gone. So um, it's been the best, worst uh, time of my life. If people say, what scares you? I'm like ha- having uh, kids and especially having daughters. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens in a couple of years, but they're, uh, it's, it's pretty rad. Yeah. Well, my daughter, she's actually getting ready to, she got a razor sent her a 170 and she's getting ready to move into the 570. And uh, that I got to, I got to be honest with you. I'm excited, but it's also got me scared, scared out of my mind. Like thinking my 10 year old now is going to be in a 570. I mean, this is like a full size car now we're moving her into. And she's driven the turbos and stuff a little bit, you know, when I'm riding with her and things like that. But I'm like, this is like, this is a big stepping stone here. So it's got me a little bit nervous. There's, you can't really, I, I've rolled a 170 before, but it takes, it takes a lot of work for a kid to roll one. Um, you know, unless you drive it off something five foot tall or something, but like 570, man, you can wad one of those up in a hurry. So I got to tell you, like one dad to another, it's got me a little nervous right now. Yeah, that, that is the thing the, you know, definitely when they first, first starting to get into 170, it was a little scary, but now like you know, like Addie, her first time really around back, she ran to a tree pretty much as fast as it would go. She was like, the seatbelt hurt me. I was like, no, you're wearing the seatbelt from now on. And actually, we're now getting the five point because uh, <laughs> for, for sure. But uh, so her impression was when she hit the tree that the seatbelt was the reason that, that she was hurt, as opposed to the seatbelt was what saved her from flying through the, the cockpit into the tree face first. So yeah. it, was, it was an interesting uh, take on, on a five-year-old's perspective of, uh, <laughs> of what, what hurt her. Yeah, damn seatbelts. <laughs> oh, too funny, man. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, uh, obviously, you know, I, you know, I mean, you know, how are things with you? Like, I, obviously, you've kind of transitioned into this role. And I, you know, I had this conversation with somebody recently and I said, you know, it's kind of interesting to me because you still could go out and do a lot of things. But I know even, uh, you know, even like, you know, going back to, to Sheeny and the triple, you know, it was one of those where you kind of kind of bowed out and said, Sheeny, you carry the torch here, man. And, you know, it's one of those like. I know that was the double was tough for you when you first did that. And now it got to that point where you're just like, you bow out, but now I see what you're doing with evil live. And, you know, obviously last year, I think you and I talked right after that, you know, and uh, you know, you've done all these amazing, you know, recreations of what evil did, but now, you know, with, with Vicky and Axel and things like that, now you've kind of moved into uh, more of a promoter type role and you're still doing, you know, all things Travis, you know what I mean? But how has that kind of transition been with you to kind of empower the people around you now and, and kind of let them take center stage? Yeah, it's been it's been awesome. I mean, and I didn't give Sheeny anything. I was working on that that triple back for, I was working on it with Red Bull for three years and couldn't get it around. Um, and then Nitro stepped in, and then everyone stopped funding everything because it just looked like it was just not going to happen. We we I mean we started with a fourteen foot ramp, and um, I think Red Bull gave up, and we were at a thirty foot ramp, and Nitro gave up, and we were at like a forty foot ramp, and ended up being uh, like forty six foot tall, forty four, wow. I forget something it was something ridiculous. We just kept having to add um, more and more transition and, and kept having to go higher. But every time we went higher, the bike would have less power. So we're trying to get, you know, so then we got Paget um, over and pretty much anyone that would try to come over and even hit the ramp, um, you know, and then coming out of the woods, I mean, shoot, I was, 
you know, you're going as, as fast as you can. Nothing at my house is, is like a straight shot because we can't take down the trees really. So we're just, it, I mean, you got to be a pretty good rider even to get to most of the, the jumps, let alone hit it. And Sheeny ended up hitting it with a 450 in fourth gear and, you know, just about 60 miles an hour at the bottom and accelerating hard all the way up going. So the lowest I could do it off the ground, and it was a step up, but off of where our baseline was, um, was about 112 feet. And that's still dr- the the airbag was at sixty five feet, so you're still, you know, <laughs> you're still dropping Madness. almost sixty feet to the um, to the bag with a you know a dirt bike on top of you. And tried it with a one twenty five, I couldn't get enough time. And tried it with a five hundred, and the first one was fast. And then I just was out of control, and the concussions onto the airbag. I was like, oh, it's soft airbag. I tried it, like shoot, man, we're, it's it's fifty foot wide. But it's only twenty foot to one side or the other. And when you have that many G's on the takeoff, I mean. Everyone was just blowing up and, and missing it. Uh, Sheeny missed it to the right. I missed it to the left. Um, not missed it completely, just, like, caught the edge and, like, smashed down. And I'm scared to death even hit it to a, an airbag. And I thought, what, what am I doing? And uh, Josh, he kept paying for his own flights out and uh, welding his own ramps. Him and James Foster was working on the, the quadruple flip for the yeah. max at the same time. And it's just been awesome working with – Everyone's like, oh, I wish I had it handed to me like the Nitro guys. I'm like, dude, if they're on the Nitro tour, it means that they're up every morning on tour at 5 o'clock in the morning. They're doing radio interviews um, and promotion stuff. Um, at 11 a.m., they're doing meet and greets with, with Make-A-Wish and, and everything. It doesn't matter if you're tired. You're, you know, Well, obviously, you're sick. You don't do the Make-A-Wish. But, um, <laughs> you know, if you're tired, you're sick, you still got to perform. You got to do your stuff. You're hurt. And uh, guys like Harry Bank, man, they just – they and R. Willie, they're just awesome, awesome – yeah, they, they they have a lot of fun along the way, but man, they, those guys work hard um, and they, they aren't afraid to send it night in, night out and um, developing the ramps and welding their own stuff and building their own stuff and, you know, buying their own airbags for the house. And it's just been, it's been really awesome seeing, you know, the next generation kind of grow up and, you know, how much work they put in. Everyone, and it's funny when you hear, when you do the Facebook or Instagram, everyone's like, oh, if I had that opportunity, I'm like, dude, you know, Josh Sheehan worked in the mines um, in just outside of Perth for, you know, I think three years to get enough money to uh, basically, you know, get himself with the motorcycle and uh, uh, the ramps and welded his own stuff. Took it to the uh, the desert, the dunes, to learn a backflip. That's back in you know 2007, I think 2006, 2007. Um, you know, and that was probably the best, if not one of the best in the world. And you know, if you want to do something, you can figure it out. It's just uh, there's there's no easy road to, to the top for sure. And don't go anywhere because we got a whole lot more with Travis Pastrana when we return here to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, episode number 400. Whether you're looking for a tire that balances high-performance responsiveness and traction in wet and light snow conditions, excellent handling and traction in wet and dry conditions, or a summer performance tire designed with a driving enthusiast in mind, General Tire has you covered. From the all-new G-Max RS to the Grabber ATX, no matter what what you drive, General Tire will get you where you're going. Learn more at GeneralTire.com. General Tire, cruising with a down and dirty radio show since 2012. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. You're listening to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. All killer and no filler. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, episode number 400. And uh, right now we got my good friend Travis Pastrana hanging out on the line with me. And and Trav, right before the break, you made uh, you made a really good point about uh, about people in general and and you know and, and people uh, the armchair quarterbacks in at home, you know, always saying, well, if I had this and I had that opportunity, and and you gave me this that those guys have. At the end of the day, you know, and I can't even say talent. You know what I mean? Is, is you know is a determining factor. I think it's how much work you want to put in because I've seen you know I've seen some people that you know didn't necessarily have the talent, but they had the 
the drive. And, you know, in one way or another, you know, they figured out a way to make it. You know what I mean? But there's a lot of blood and, and sweat equity that goes into, uh, you know, into that. And I think a lot of people think that, you know, things are given. But like you said, even the Nitro Tour, I mean, I, I've seen that behind the scenes and, and gone to quite a few events. And, you know, they don't see the people in the back icing and, you know, and getting massages because stuff's cramped up. And, you know, this is tweaked and that's tweaked and they've got a concussion. And, you know, I don't think a lot of people see that. You know, it's kind of a behind the scenes. And I think, you know, one thing I've loved about your videos and things like that that you guys have put out from Nitro and, and action figures and everything else, I feel like it, it, you guys have kind of really helped show the full story and, and make things go full circle and shown. You know, I think a lot of people just want to show the successes, but you guys have showed the failures as well. You know, and I think it really sh- shares the bigger picture of, of what it actually takes to be successful. Yeah, no, it's been been fun. Even like guys like, uh, you know, Twitch comes out with his uh, his film, you know, every uh, year, a year, two years or whatever. Yeah. And, um, you know, just it's a different, the California crew is the guys that kind of go out and um, you know, they dig and they'll, they'll yeah. dig for weeks, you know, everyone going out and bringing their own, uh, their own water out there to, um, you know, pretty much the desert and getting all this stuff shaped and, you know, East coast where, you know, kind of the, the nitro crew or whatever is all, you know, building ramps and, and bobcats and stuff, but it's still, it's, uh, you know, it, there's a lot of good ways and a lot of awesome ways to have fun on, on dirt bikes. But at the end of the day, you know, it, people get too caught up in a lot of stuff and we're still, we're getting to make a living, you know, for a lot of the nitro crew on kids toys. And if you're on dirt bikes or cars, you got to be a heck of a salesman, man. Especially getting into cars, you know that. Like razors are the kind of the, the stepping stone to, to get in and prove that you can drive. But even if you can drive, I mean NASCAR, before you make a dime in the Cup Series, you have to sell 14 million dollars. You have to justify 14 million dollars. That's what it costs to run one competitive Cup team for, or Cup car for the year. So That's... you know, even if you're the, <laughs> like, man, oh, you're doing great. <laughs> You uh, you know, they're they're paying you. You're like, no, I'm still paying for my ride. Like, I get get a lot of it covered, but shoot, man, this is uh, you know, you still gotta gotta be able to to go out there and do your promotion and stuff. So it's 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 a wild ride, but it's uh, it's been a lot of fun and been very fortunate to to be able to do it for for this long, I guess. Yeah, well, you know, and that's being said, you're still doing it. But, um, you know, and I know kind of freestyle stuff. I mean, you've probably got a few things in the back of your head that you always wanted to be able to do and you didn't. But, I mean, you know, even looking at kind of full circle and all-encompassing and looking at, you know, race cars, you've driven pretty much everything you can possibly think of. I mean, is there anything out there that you're going, man, I I still would like to try that or I'd drive that or I'd race that or, uh, you know, attempt that? I mean, is there a few of those back there where, you know, a guy like such as yourself that's accomplished so much, you still – there's still a few things where you're like, yeah, I need to do that before I call it a day. Not that you're ever going to call it a day. No, I mean, there's, there's bucket list races, you know, you got, you got the car, um, Indy 500, Daytona 500, you know, all stuff that you're like, man, if I really put my head down, like how much are you willing to give up to, you know, as far as time and family and, and, uh, stuff to, to be able to not give up family, but <laughs> give up family time, yeah. uh, you know, and, 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 do what it's going to take to, uh, sorry, that came out way wrong. Um, <laughs> to, to be able to do that, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, as far as tricks and motorcycles, the double backflip 360, well, it started as a backflip 360 and then escalated to like the Aussie roll is what they call it. Um, I mean, that was, I wanted to do that for so long, probably like a 10 year process and finally got that checked off. So I'm, I'm not, there's nothing really on a dirt bike as far as trick wise that I'm that excited to do. I'm excited to work on new ways to, hopefully have our crew not hurt themselves when they try it. But, um, you know, with uh, back jump and those guys are fun. But, um, you know, at the, at the end of the day, it's rallycross. I, I truly believe that, you know, it, racing is, is, is not dead in, in the U.S. by any means. Um, but, you know, a lot of times, and it goes along the same cycles with skateboarding and motorcycles, it goes from grassroots, and people are having a lot of fun doing what they love to do with their friends, and then it gets – to a certain level where it's almost impossible to get to that top echelon. Yeah. Um, and you kind of lose that grassroots feel or you lose that, that entry way into it. And then you got, you know, you got the same guys battling for the, the same spots because they're getting the most practice and, and obviously they're already good to get there. Um, but it makes it tough to get there. So my goal from nitro was to say, okay, you know, let, let's build, um, you know, kind of a, a place where these guys can, can come up and you know, we get a lot of, flax for some of the different tours that we've tried but we're like hey we're doing a grassroots tour we're only doing a moto tour we're doing whatever we're gonna try to bring out locals from each area you know a couple guys we still obviously with every nitro show there's got to be that the top echelon but let's let's try some guys let's see who can um you know can get in and at least that's there's a way to entry 
Um, whereas like X games doesn't have a qualifier, um, but nitro world games, um, every sport for, for our event, you can qualify your way in, which is, I mean, you know, it's not easy, uh, <laughs> but you still got to beat the best to get there, but, um, but at least there's a way. So that, that's been fun. But for me right now, it's all about rally cross and trying to rebuild kind of from grassroots razor stuff, uh, short course trucks all the way up and, you know, see if we can build courses that, that can accommodate everything. And, um, you know, we can really find that, that talent that's coming up um, and hopefully kind of build that rally cross uh, back up from where GRC kind of started and then, uh, and dropped away. Yeah. Well, and I know, you know, even, uh, you know, and, and, you know, when you get an endorsement, you know, and you and I, you know, you're close with Ken Block. I'm pretty good friends with Ken and uh, he doesn't give out endorsements very often, but when he, you know, after nitro, he, he goes, that's the best rally cross I've ever driven. And like, for me, from a guy like that, who has done GRC, he's gone to Europe and things like that. Like to me, that that's a big statement. And it's, it's got to make you feel good. Like, you know, I know this is good, but when you get an endorsement like that from a guy like Ken, you really know, hey, we're we're onto something here. Yeah, well, from, from Nitro Circus, we found if the athletes or athletes, whatever you call it, the skaters, moto guys, guys, if everyone's stoked on their jumps, they're able to try new stuff, and and it's safer where they they don't feel like they're going to die every time they try something yeah. new. Um, yeah, it gets still dangerous, but um, you know, with the airbag landings and this kind of stuff, it's like, all right, um, they're excited to try new stuff. They're excited to push. They're excited to go out night after night and um, you know and and ride with their buddies. And when the athletes are excited, the, the crowd's excited. Um, and with car racing, you just don't see that a lot anymore. I mean, the racers, they know what to expect. They know everything that's going to happen all through the race day. Where at Nitro World Games, you know, you got guys like Scott Speed who've come out and, you know, obviously he broke his back this year, so that was not a, not a great testament um, to the track and the safety that we're, we're trying to do. But um, it was actually they, – they had me kind of pull that jump in a little bit because they said, you know, let's make it a tabletop or a single. And that – kind of backfired so um <laughs> but, uh, and it's a long long story long uh scott came out and was like man this is like i'm excited to drive yeah i'm scared i'm nervous um I'm, I'm having fun i don't know what's going to happen there's berms there's there's all kinds of stuff there's there's flat there's pavement there's concrete there's you know uh gravel there's dirt he goes this is really exciting for me and that's um you know you get someone that's that's raced um you know indy f1 nascar and for him to say this is the most excited he's ever been to drive, that's that's pretty cool. And then you got guys, uh, the DTM champion and, and WRX uh, champ. But to jump back in on that, uh, you know, all the drivers were excited and scared at the same time. But that scared and excited brings us back to like X Games 2001, when all the jumps were were different and bigger. And you know, Coliseum, shoot the crowd wondering, you know, who's going to do the biggest jumps, and everyone's scared, and we're all just throwing new tricks and. Um, you know, that was neat. Now it's really kind of methodical. Everyone knows the jumps and the setups and yeah, it's good to make it like the Olympics, but at the same time, it's, um, you know, it takes a little bit of what freestyle is all about away. Yeah, no, I agree. You know, and it, it's kind of cool to have that excitement back. Cause like you said, everything kind of gets monotonous. And I think that's when people, you know, it's not must see TV. It's not must see video. It's, it's just one of those, oh, if I miss this, all right, nothing really special is going to happen. You know, it might be a good race that goes down the wire, but we're not really going to miss anything. But when you can create that must-see, I have to tune in event like X Games used to be, you know, and, uh, you know, and like Nitro is now, you know, and, and with that race, I think that's when, you know, it, it gets its hooks in people and it gets its hooks in the athletes. And, uh, you know, that, you know, kind of is what is a catalyst for driving progression. Yeah, no, I, I hope so. So yeah. we'll see. I mean, I got a call from – um, you know, there's a, a couple of the IndyCar drivers that reached out, a couple of NASCAR drivers reached out. That's that's cool for me to see that, you know, they're like, hey, that looks like fun. They, what, when can we do it? Is there going to be more? Like, can, how can we get into this? And are there any more cars in the U.S.? Like, we gotta we got to build up our car count. we got to build up grassroots stuff. But nah, I think it'll be fun. It's gonna, there's a lot down the pipeline and just trying to make it all work out and have some fun along the way. It's kind of a, my dad said, man, you should. You just, you never grew up. You like ride that train till the wheels fall off. <laughs> That's one one thing I've learned. I, I had the real job for a while and, uh, uh, you know, Jason Ellis and I had this conversation, but guys like you and me and Ellis and, uh, you know, uh, plenty of us, I call it, we all have no job jobs. Somehow we figured out a way to get paid to have fun. And, uh, you know, once you get to that point there, there's nothing better, man. 
No, couldn't couldn't agree more. So, all right, Travel. I know you've got another call to jump on, my friend. Thank you for the continued support of the show. Uh, you know, and and calling in for this uh, this special episode number four hundred. You were the top of my list. I was like, I can't have an episode four hundred not have TP on the show. So, uh, thanks for making it a reality, my friend. Dude, thank you. Wouldn't miss it for the world. Have a great rest of the show, and uh, I'll be uh, be out racing with you soon. I hope. Yeah, me too, man. Man, uh, you know. Uh, it's I, I've been really, really lucky in my radio career, you know, and I started out and uh, guys like Travis Pastrana, Ken Block, for that matter. A lot of these guys were guys I, you know, I watched on TV. I thought were heroes, things like that. But you, you never really thought you'd know them. And, you know, I remember the first time I did Pastrana's interview, he had no idea who the hell I was. And, um, you know, and and fast forward almost a decade later, you get to know these guys, you get to know their families. I've been backstage at Nitro Circus Tours and, you know, I get to know him and, you know, Travis Ian. Tommy, Jolene, Wessel, Hubert, like a bunch of people close to TP. And he's one of the most genuine dudes that I have ever met. And just uh, you want to talk about one of the all around best, not only race car drivers, but action sports athletes in the world. It's the only guy I've ever seen that can get behind the wheel of an off-road truck. You can get behind the wheel of a rally car. You can be, get behind the wheel in NASCAR, road racing. And be competent and fast at all of it. You can get on the on a dirt bike, and whether it's freestyle or motocross, he can be good at it. Um, or enduro riding, you know. And then he he jumps into action sports, and obviously he can do FMX. Jumps on a BMX bike. The guy's wicked, wicked good on a BMX bike. Like you want to talk about just a guy who can. He is absolutely a renaissance man when it comes to action sports and motorsports. Like, he's just damn good. Other than anything with a board, he'll be the first to tell you, if he's got a board, he sucks. He leaves that to his wife, and rightfully so. Lindsay is a badass. But, you know, I just – Travis is um, – Travis is literally a once – I don't even want to say a once-in-a-lifetime um, type type guy. He's literally once in a, uh, a century. I don't. I don't know. I mean, he's – I don't think it's never been done what he's done, and I don't think it'll ever be done again. I mean, the only guy I can think is close would be uh, maybe a guy like Brian Deegan. Um, you know, and, and Brian has been ridiculously, you know, ridiculously good behind the wheel of just about anything he's tried. But, you know, even him, he, he's going to he's probably going to bend the knee to Travis Pastrana, you know. And, and I say that in a good way. I mean, I have all the respect in the world for Brian Deegan. Um, but, uh, you know, he's, you know, it's just – Trav is that good. He's that freaking good. It's the easiest way to put it, you know, and, and he's absolutely one of the nicest uh, nicest guys I've ever met. But really fortunate to uh, to become good friends with him and, and him support my things. I mean, I got this, you know, this iRacing event going on and text Travis and he's like, boom, in, dude. And, uh, you know, he's in because he's going to have a whole hell of a lot of fun with it, but he never turns me down. And that's what I'm saying. Like, he's just a he's just a quality, quality human being. And, uh, you know, and it's always nice when your heroes and your superheroes, they live up to the hype. Travis is definitely that guy. So, uh, yeah, fun times catching up with him and having him on episode number 400. So, uh, yeah, we are going to uh, take a short commercial break, and I'll be back to uh, wrap things up right here on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online, in syndication on networks across the U.S., and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Welcome back to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Wrapping up uh, (laughs) another edition of the show. Uh, thank you guys for uh, continued support over the years. Big thanks to Travis Pastrana for uh, that interview back in last fall. And uh, obviously, uh, Kelly Earnhardt for uh, 
taking the time to uh, to call in and uh, you know giving us the time. Definitely check out her new book, Drive: Nine Lessons to Win in Business and in Life. It's available April seventh. Uh, available for pre order now on Amazon and anywhere you get uh, get your. Uh, your books. Uh, I'm still a physical book owner. I haven't totally gone the Kindle route yet. I've read a few there, but I still like having that hard copy in my hand for some odd reason. You know, I've got digital pretty much everywhere else. Books is like the one holdout for me. Magazine, same way. Um, but uh, yeah, just interesting way uh, we have uh, changed the way we consume content. But uh, yeah, speaking of content, we got a ton dropping at Jim Beaver 15 on social media, down and dirty show.com. Um, also on. Uh, uh, you know, on uh, Apple Podcasts as well, Project Action as well as the Down and Dirty Radio Show. You know, hit the subscribe button over there, leave a rating. Much appreciated for everybody who has. And um, don't forget, we got that massive iRacing event coming up. Um, you know, that will uh, that will be April 11th. Um, you know, and uh, that's Saturday, Saturday before Easter, three o'clock Pacific time. Uh, you can get all the info on our social channels. We've got a big press release coming out about that as well. So uh, lots of big, big stuff with some heavy, heavy hitters going to be in that. Uh, looking for a coupon code for iRacing, 50% off PR dash Jim Beaver. And uh, it is uh, down and down dirty. <laughs> I'm, excuse me. Jim Beaver 15 on Dirtfish will get you uh, 15% off. Big thanks to General Tire, Polaris Razor, Vision Wheel, Rigid, Dirtfish, Optimus, uh, RacingJunk.com, uh, our good friends at iRacing, and everybody who continues to support us, GSP, XTV, Axles, and, uh, you know, everybody else. Couldn't do it without you guys. Uh, those of you, you know, at home, please be safe. If you are uh, one of, uh, I guess, an essential employee and you're out there, please be safe as well. Thanks to all of our troops overseas for everything you do for us. Be safe over there. Uh, everybody tune on, uh, in on AFN. Uh, much appreciated. Um, you know, and uh, I guess we'll be back next week with some more uh, general tire down and dirty radio show powered by polaris razor if you got guest suggestions once again hit me up it is at jim beaver 15 on social media would love to get some of your guest ideas and get them on the show all right we'll see you guys next week be safe and uh have a great one